Hey, Cameron here with the C Butters Tech channel. Now, I am building out an all SSD storage server, and this is actually going to be an upgrade from my old server, but I'm going to give you the brief overview. But this is going to be a multi part video because I'm upgrading my old server and I'm having to take parts, I'm having to back up virtual machines, I'm moving from uh, a Unix system to uh, TrueNAS. And there's just a lot of details that, that are going into this. But let me tell you about this new server. Um, uh, before I can tell you about the new server, let's go look at my old server. Because I made a few mistakes. Not mistakes, but maybe questionable decisions as I built that out. And you'll see what I mean when I show you. So let's go take a look. And what we've got here is what used to be my server rack. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at that. Uh, nice nice looking rack. It just takes up a lot of space for a home environment. Um, I had this whole uh, server chassis with lots of hard drives in there. And what I ended up happening is I got really into my 3D print lab and I had the server rack in here and I pulled it all out to do the 3D printing and I had no more room for this. So I thought, oh, well, I'll put my server into my network rack. Well, I tore apart the old server chassis and decided I would mount the motherboard on the wall. And it looks awful. It looks super janky. It's exposed. It was a horrible idea. It's, it's, it's just, <laughs> it does not look very good. And I want to improve things and you can see this is uh this is not a very deep network rack so i needed that very small chassis it does expand out a little bit and i'll probably move it a notch out to make it this uh 11.8 inch server chassis fit here and it should but i've got all these drives um a whole bunch of uh I think they're they're mainly anywhere from 16 to to 20 terabyte hard drives. Now I will be reusing this motherboard because it does have everything I need. I'm gonna pull off these. Uh, these are just uh, RAID cards. Uh, I think they're LSI 9211 in IT mode, so they're not doing any RAID function. They're just providing SATA out outputs to the board. And uh, it has two M2 slots. This is a ASRock X470D4U2-2T. It's got two 10 gigabit Ethernet ports. So let's go. Let's go take a look at the new stuff, though. Okay, so let's look at what we are going to build, and that is a whopping 64 terabytes of solid state man flash that's going to be in this storage server and all of that flash is going to be in this one five and a half inch bay uh, that has all these two and a half inch ssd compartments and that's all going to be in that one small area pretty crazy that uh, that's that's all that's all we're going to need um, it's going to use uh, Ryzen 9 5900X with 12 cores and 24 threads. That's going to be an upgrade over the 816 that it has right now. Um, now, let's talk about uh, well, some of the you eagle eyes out there may see 8 terabyte 870 cubos and be like, that's a bad idea for if you're going to be running any virtual machines. I'm not. I have another situation or another um, a solution for running my VMs on the server. The 870 Cuvo drives are just going to be holding static media uh, for the most part. Um, you know, backups, uh, home movies, uh, things like that that uh, are saved and aren't going to change much over time. Uh, it's not going to be a lot of IOPS running system files, uh, you know, the operating system kind of churning around. That's not going to be happening on these drives. Where that is going to be happening is on these. Um, I don't know if you saw Wendell's video on Optane, but uh, 
Intel has these on fire cell. And what I'm going to be doing is uh, running Optane drives in a mirror. These are 118 gigabytes. And I find what I do use for my virtual machines is maybe like a Plex server that will reference the files on the QVO, but all the system files uh, will be handled on the Optane. And I'll be able to run, I mean, I usually have about five or six different virtual machines that usually don't have more than 20 gigabytes or so uh, that they're using. So I, I really suspect that I'll be able to get away with uh, probably, I'll, I'll have, I'll, I'll probably end up doing some of the quicker, uh, well, I'll use these Optane drives. Uh, I may I may expand, uh, that's the nice thing, is I'm, I'm going to be using all the onboard SATA on the motherboard. I'm going to be able to pull off those LSIs. Uh, so I will have uh, 16, uh, the, the X16 PCIe lanes that I will be able to expand storage if I need to uh, in the future. But uh, the Optane is going to be great for running uh, web servers super quick. Uh, it's going to boot super quick. Uh, I really wanted to use the new ASRock Rack x570 board because i had been using the x470 and i was a kind of seemed seemed like a no-brainer to move to the x570 uh just because it had eight sata ports rather than six uh and obviously i need eight sata ports but the problem was is uh the x570 board is impossible to find uh, in fact newegg had one for sale and i pre-ordered it but here i am a week later and I contacted them and they said, hey, well, you don't know when we're going to be getting it in. So um, even though I bought and paid for it, they can't seem to ship it to me. So I figured it's compatible with the new CPU on the X470. X470 should actually use a little bit less power for the, for the chipset. So I'm just going to go with the X470, do the BIOS upgrade, and... Hopefully that's fine. I did have to order this, which is, this is an NVMe adapter to SATA, which uh, is going to allow me, because that board only has six SATA, so rather than having a whole big PCIe lane used for uh, a big RAID card that's not being used for RAID, I'm just going to try this, see if this works, because I want to finally get a GPU in this system as well. And so you're probably saying, well, 11 inches deep, this does support, um, it does support a graphics card. And I have, I will have to see if we can make it work, but I'm going to be putting a 1660 Super in there. Um, and it should, I, I have been running two servers, one for virtualization and storage and the other for uh, GPU function uh, and transcoding. And so, I mean, I'm literally going down from what was that massive service rack, server rack with two systems in it, uh, which one I mounted on the wall in a weird fashion, the other one I've, I've dismantled at this point. Um, but I'm hopefully getting all that functionality out of one system here. That's the goal. I'm going to be uh, migrating from ESXi, uh, which was running ZFS in a VM with pass-through, on the uh, LSI cards, and that was a good setup. I use that. I've been using that for probably ten years. I've been using a Napit, uh, along with Solaris, OmniOS. Uh, so a lot of people used to use that, but it's getting a little bit long in the tooth. And I really have been wanting to try the TrueNAS scale setup. Uh, I've been playing around with that in a test environment, and I think I can make it work. And I think it's going to work really well. So we're going to have some migration going on from the ZFS. Uh, we're going to be having uh, a lot of VMs that need to be reconfigured. The VMs are in ESXi, and they need to be transposed into TrueNAS Scale, uh, virtualization platform, which um, is going to require a little bit of fiddling to make work. So there's a lot of work cut out for me in this build. Um, but I think I can get it all done, and I'm really excited about the potential of having this one mini unit be able to, A, have a ton of cores, 24 threads, uh, be able to do GPU, hopefully get that GPU pass-through working to my VM, 
uh, have all flash storage with 10 gigabit to be able to fully saturate that 10 gigabit link, with I, which I haven't been able to do on my spinning rust just because of the way I had it configured and the limitations that, that it had. So hopefully I get all that throughput with all flash storage. Very quiet, just a few fans. And uh, hopefully this all-in-one server rack is gonna re, well, all-in-one server chassis is gonna replace my entire server rack. And that's the goal. Um, so you may be wondering like, well, you, you had a lot of storage before why are you moving to 64 terabytes? Because if I'm telling you the truth, I had 196 terabytes in that old server. And that's a lot. Uh, you may be like, going from 196 to 64, what's this, you're gonna run in, like, what are you doing? Well, I realized that I was chasing the dragon and I just wanted more and more storage and I realized I keep adding storage, I keep upgrading these drives. What is my working data set? And my working data set is 20 to 25 terabytes at this point. And so why, why do I need to keep getting more space? It's not growing that fast. So if you compare 64 to almost 200, that sounds really bad. Uh, but that's because all of my regular uh, magnetic hard drives were in mirror configuration. So instantly cut your 200 terabytes in half. I mean, it's, it was roughly 80 terabytes usable. Um, and what I'm gonna be doing with these eight terabyte drives is I'm actually gonna be running them in two VDEVs of uh, RAID Z. So what that means is uh, for every, they're gonna be in four drive VDEVs with one drive dedicated to parity, which means I'm going to have 48 terabytes. So it's really a difference of going from 80 terabytes to 40 terabytes in this setup. And I think I can live with that for now. Um, maybe down the road when there's some larger two and a half inch SSDs or I go the U2 router full NVMe with, I think you can fit 12 U M2s or U2, 12 M2s in, in a five and a half inch bay. I don't know. When those prices come down or old server armor becomes available, maybe I'll upgrade to that. But I think I'm going to be just fine for many, many years with f only 48, only 48 terabytes. But we'll see how it goes. I do have another backup server that has an additional 48 terabytes. Uh, so I should be completely good for making complete backups of all my stuff. So I'm good to go. I'm excited about this build. We're going to cover uh, not only the build of this, but how to migrate VMs from ESXi to TrueNAS Scale. And this is just going to be part one, because who knows how many parts this is going to end up being. But anyways, uh, if you're not bored yet, go ahead and subscribe. And uh, I'll try to keep providing compelling content uh, if you're interested in the home server space. And anyways, uh, go ahead and do that and we'll see you on the next video.